following the TEDx talk, how you can wind up in a straight jacket. Hi, and welcome to this episode of the Career Change Series, How Unicorns Get Out of a Straight Jacket. And this is following the TEDx talk, How Unicorns Wind Up in a Straight Jacket, which is to say super talented, multifaceted, beautiful people who are perhaps in the wrong jobs for them. So they feel restricted, they feel constrained, they feel a bit lost, much like being in a straight jacket. Today with me, I've got one of the most exciting, most creative guests we've had on the series. And you'll find out why in a minute, but I've been talking to her and it's exciting. I, I'm dying to share this with you. So please help me in welcoming Jacqueline Apostol Apostolidu to the show. Hi, Jacqueline, welcome to the show. Hi, hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. I really tried with the name and I knew it as well. <laughs> uh, it's okay, don't worry. I my family just call me Papadopoulos. It's easier for them to remember. <laughs> so Jackie, can you tell us a little bit about your um what you do, your story? Okay. Right, so what I do now um is I am self-employed. I have my own business in Larnaca, in the back streets of Larnaca. I run a small shop which um, is full of things that I have made myself out of mosaics. I've got a passion for working with glass, ceramics, and lots of other materials. Um, I make useful objects that people can have in their houses. Um, I also teach adults and children also this, how to do this, this activity, which um, I think is something that people either have a real good feeling for or they don't. You know, it's a creative thing. Yeah. you have to put your own style into it so you know if you're if you're arty or if you know what you want to do it it it's also a very relaxing hobby to do as well but I've made it into my business which is um my passion and I think when you walk into my shop people say oh my gosh we can feel the passion that you've got in here so <laughs> um, as well as that, I teach children that need a little bit more help outside of school. Um, I used to teach before, so I've got a, a good name in the community and I usually get children brought to me that need a little bit more help. So my afternoons are usually full of that and teaching the creative side as well. So that's what I do now. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. How colorful and vibrant is that career <laughs> detail that you, you've designed for yourself that centers around your passions and all, everything that fulfills you I love that yeah because yeah. I love children as well and um because quitting my previous job which I'm going to tell you about was one the reason I mean it wasn't because of the children because I love children and um I'm still working with children which works for me as well and keeps me young <laughs> wow so you, you mentioned you were going to tell us a bit about your, your career journey. Um, okay. Where did that, because I know you mentioned Monica, <laughs> which is um, in Cyprus, but you have an English accent. So talk us okay. through the whole okay. journey. My gosh, how long have you got? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm English, as you can probably guess from my voice. Um, I, I left England after having, I was working in the corporate um, department mostly, I was actually at the time when computers had just come out, right? So personal computers were a new thing. And it was my job, I was working for an office equipment company to basically train people on how to use new computers and secretaries uh, all over the country that were finding out they didn't have to retype anything anymore. And it was just like, wow. I mean, I was, I was very famous and they, people loved knowing how to get onto computers. And I had a really good job and a good house and everything like that but all my life I'd wanted to travel mm. and I was seeing my my years passing and I just thought I've got to do it if I don't take the plunge now I'm not going to do it so basically in a nutshell I sold up I found a traveling partner who was somebody I didn't know because she um, was also in the same kind of mode as me and in those days we had no internet okay we're talking back now in the late 80s there was no internet, there was no mobile phones. Uh, life was pretty basic. So we kind of got put together from me filling in a form at a travel shop in Cambridge in England 
And uh, her calling me one evening, I just immediately recognized her voice as somebody I liked. We met the next day and we just clicked and we booked our around the world trip that day. Can you believe? <laughs> No, so, I do a lot of ballsy things, but I, I can't believe just doing that. <laughs> That's awesome. And managed to sell my house, sort out everything. Um, within three months, I was off and we basically backpacked. We just left home with a backpack um, oh. and around the world ticket, which we were supposed to follow. And uh, we went through Asia to start off with. We ended up in, um, we went to, to Australia, which we just loved. And then while we were in Australia, this is quite critical, we, we met um, people that had a sailing boat and we ended up doing some sailing lessons. And we were in the Barrier Reef, which has got to be the best place in the world to sail, okay? Wow. And you just put your head in the water and it's like looking in a, an aquarium. It's just amazing. So we learned to sail there. Um, we, we stayed on a boat for a few nights and we just loved it. So the next step was New Zealand. Now, New Zealand is like the gateway to the South Pacific. So there's all these islands in the South Pacific that you might not have heard of a lot of people, but um, Fiji Island was one I was always dreaming of ending up on. There's Vanuatu, there's the Solomon Islands, um, there's Papua New Guinea, there's Hawaii. There's lots and lots of lovely, beautiful islands all around the South Pacific. Anyway, another cut a long story short, we took a boat to become crew <laughs> and our trip, our first trip, me and my friend, was to go to Fiji Islands, which should have been a, like a 14 day passage from Auckland in New Zealand to Fiji, which it was. And I nearly died on the first leg because I was so, so seasick. I thought I was going to die. Wow. <laughs> uh, event, yeah, eventually my stomach came back to normal. I started to really, really enjoy the, the journey. Oh my gosh, it was just like, time didn't matter anymore. It was like, you didn't need a watch. It didn't matter. You saw the sunset, you saw the sunrise. It was just an amazing experience for me. Not quite the same for my friend who, couldn't wait to get off when we reached our destination, which was where we unfortunately parted ways because I decided I was going to carry on and do more sailing because I'd fallen in love with it. And she went on and carried on the rest of the journey that we did, we should have done together and ended up back in England, okay? Uh, and I've still never gone back to England and that's now another 30 years ago now, okay. Oh. <laughs> I continued, I promised this the captain of the ship that I would stay with him and do the season, which was a six month season. You have to then go and shelter from cyclones and things like that during that, that time. Um, but I just didn't want to leave and I carried on and eventually we became together and I had a son with this man and we, he was born in New Zealand. And then from New Zealand, when my son was born, my whole aspect of life changed. Having children changes you. And I saw the danger that I'd never seen before. I saw what could happen. And now I had this little life that was relying completely on me. Um, and I just wanted to get nearer to my family that I hadn't seen properly for many, many years. So we set sail from New Zealand. And it took two years to reach the Med and Cyprus, where we are now, is the first place that we were in the Med. And I kind of stuck here. <laughs> I got stuck here. So for, from, from teaching office, uh, from in the office and in corporate and teaching personal computers to sailing. And then what did you do uh, career wise when you came to Cyprus? Right. So when I came to Cyprus, I had one son with me. He was almost two then. And then um, I had another child. And I found in, in Cyprus, it was really hard to find a job. I mean, I needed to have a job. Mm. But I had two young kids. And the only job I could find, well, I was volunteering at a school, a private school where they, they spoke in English all day. And um, I got to know a few of the staff there. And then when it was a, like a job for an assistant that came up, they kind of recommended me and I had to go through the interview process, but I got the job, which was perfect because I had two young kids and when they went to school, I was at school. When I finished, I could pick them up. So I have no family here to help me, only my husband, okay? Oh, so yeah. it was 
he was juggling to try and bring them up. And I said, okay, I'll just do this till the kids have finished school. Hmm. 17 years later, I was still doing the same job. <laughs> And things changed quite a lot. I mean, I, I became very experienced. And I think I was very good. At, I was good at my job. And um, I had a special uh, thing for teaching children to read. That was my thing, really. I, I just love that click when you see a child that can read, you right. know, after just putting the sounds together and suddenly whoosh, they, they, they go. Um, but things changed within the company that I was working for. I started to become disillusioned. At the same time, I was making mosaics myself to, to be creative at home. I was working on these at home and trying to uh, just, just find an outlet for my creativity. But it was everyone used to, I used to give all my things away that I made. And my friends used to say to me, Jackie, it's so nice. You should start up a shop. And I was like, oh God, can I really do that? Could I actually do that? Anyway, the opportunity arose where I was amongst a few other crafters because crafting community within Lanka is, is, is fairly, it's fairly large. I mean, there's quite a few people that do make things. And I, I joined with another few other people that we all shared a shop together to see how it would go. I wanted to just check. Um, it wasn't too bad, but I didn't like actually sharing it with everybody else. And I wanted to be I wanted my own decision. I wanted to make my own decisions about things. Right, right, of course. For months, I used to walk past this shop where I'm sitting today, and I used to look in, the, and it was all closed up, and it had all paper in the window. I couldn't see inside, but I used to think, is this a good area? Do you think I should come here? And I, I hummed and hard, walking to the school where I was working, not feeling very happy in what I was doing anymore, and thinking, should I, should I not? Anyway, I one day bit the bullet, I took the phone number home and I gave it to my husband. I said, you call, please, because if, if you don't call, I might have to pay more rent. <laughs> he called. And when they told me what the rent was and I was like, I knew I could afford it. I thought, OK, done. So I did. And I moved in that Christmas. And that's like nearly five years ago now. And then I still carried on working at the school until I knew I had enough. I'd built up en enough for me to try and move out. Mm. And again, it was, should I, should I not? You know, it was that risk of, of having an income and not having a definite income to go to because, it, you know, it's when you work for yourself, you can't guarantee that you can't just open a shop and expect people to come in and buy things. Of course. So I took the risk anyway, and then I gave him my notice. And uh, now I'm doing what I always dreamed of doing. I've met, I'm still teaching. I make things that I love making. Um, I, I feel the most happy I feel is when people come in and they say, wow. And I say, yes, I created this. And they're like, wow, you made that. It's like, um, more, even more important than selling something. It's the fact that they like what I've made. So, sorry, that's an awful lot of things to say, but. Um, I can see how passionate you are about it. I, I just love <laughs> listen, listening to the whole journey. And, and you shared a bit about the emotions as well, not feeling happy, um, then sometimes really needing to work. So then you picked, you got whatever. And I think a lot of a lot of us go through these stages, you know, sometimes a career change for money, um, sometimes a career change for lifestyle because it suited your sons, and sometimes yeah. a career change for fulfillment, which sounds like what you're doing now and how fulfilling yeah. it is that someone loves what you've created. So I think you've covered pretty much the career journey, the, the, the basic career journey that most people go through at one stage or another. That's awesome. Wow. Thank you. So in the context of the TEDx talk, we were talking about three stages or three yeah. stages of choosing the career you love, like you've done. And the first thing was um, to identify clues for you what made you so confident that you're good at this? What is your natural genius or your natural path to wealth? Or what are you always complimented on? What are some of the clues for you? Well, the teaching side, apparently my mother said she always knew I was gonna be a teacher when I was younger because mm -hmm. I used to have all the local kids in the area in, into the house and I was teaching them to read even if they were much younger than me, but I was already doing it then. I don't really remember that, but apparently I was doing that. <laughs> and the creative side of me came a lot from the sailing part because I visited so many different cultures 
so many different styles of art and oh my gosh I just wanted to try and recreate some of the things that I'd seen um and especially you know Cyprus has got this and Greece have got this kind of blue feeling haven't they it's kind of yeah. the sun and blue sea and I, I do a lot of stuff that reflect on that as well so it was like partly my travels had come into me, my creativeness as well and, and made me I didn't even know I had it in me at the time but I know now <laughs> <laughs> I love that confidence and that certainty of I know now I found it I discovered it, <laughs> yeah. this is it. I love it <laughs> and step two was connecting the dots um with yeah. what you're naturally good at with some of maybe your lifestyle choices or hobby choices or uh willingness to do certain things what were some of the connections you made well obviously the fact that i was already teaching and i could continue it on but kind of on my own level on my own basis you know with my own kind of yeah people and also the fact that um you know your, your age has a lot to do with it as well i think you get to the point in life where you think oh, oh i think it's time to do what i really want to do right <laughs> So it was a bit of a push. Both my children are now independent. You know, my daughter's going to be 20 this year and my son's 25. So I've given them the years that I needed to give them, I feel. Um, I mean, I still give them whatever they need now, but I feel that it's my turn to do what I need to do now. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm super proud of that. Again, that's a huge why of why you would go and, and pursue uh, yeah. a career that you love to set an example for it that's really cool yeah and that's what I've said to them I don't care what they do as long as they're happy my son's still searching for what he wants to do yeah. my daughter is no my daughter is known from the age of five what she wants to do so there you go you can't have two the same <laughs> keeps it interesting for sure yes yeah the final step of the TEDx talk was um to apply your genius and the connections to your career and I think you've elaborated that beautifully. <laughs> How would you say you've applied these, the creative genius, the teaching genius, and um, just the openness and being able to do it your way, the connection? Well, by being able to be um, self-reliant, I think, and taking that plunge to open my own business, to find out what I had to do for all that, because it's not easy, as anybody in like Cyprus probably knows. It's, there's a lot, a lot of... Uh, things you have to cross over to make your own business but um I was determined and I I knew I could make it work and I, I I am still determined to make it work even with all these lockdowns that we've had I mean it just hit me badly because yeah. I've had to close up so much more than I've opened this year and the lack of tourism doesn't help either yeah. however I always seem to find a way and the right people find me so that's that's my motto I just I just keep going so yeah you know like just uh, and I would say this is probably a professional hazard, but listening to you and, and just making the connection from that young person in, 80, in the late 80s who was independent, had this idea, wanted to do it, and left everything for it. And you can see that through your career, doing the sailing, making the decision on your own, okay, well, I enjoy this, I'm going to stick with it, and I want to do the business, and I've opened it, you know, and that natural trait that you've... Yeah, it's full of I had never thought about that, but I suppose I am a bit of a risk taker. I always have been. So I, I think you have to in life. If you want to make something of yourself, you've got to do it. Haven't you? You've got to give it a try. And who is it? So many people say it doesn't matter if you fail, whatever you do, you can try again because, you know, you, it's not end. It's not means it's the end of everything just because you failed, does it? You have to keep trying. That's what I say to my kids as well. It doesn't matter. Sure, just keep going. For sure. And what shows failure isn't part of the journey too? <laughs> so sure. well, yeah. And you learn from things, don't you? You learn from your mistakes. You learn from other people. And, uh, and, and you, you don't make the mistakes again. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, and that brings us to the, the, the our final question, which is what's the one piece of advice you will give to someone who's considering a career change like yours or or just has that zeal and that willpower to do something for themselves but maybe right. they're holding themselves back what would you say to them i would say even um if you if you can sit down and write down all the good things that could happen to you from this move 
and all the bad things and then compare them. And I assure you, you're going to find more good things that are going to happen to you when you do that. And just take the risk because life is short. And if the coronavirus has taught us anything, it's this, isn't it? Life is short. And it's too short to be doing something that you really don't like every day. I wake up in the morning now and I am happy to go to work and do what I do and create my life around it. So, yeah, that's what everyone is should have i believe you should have that and and trust the, the the creative person who works with their hands will give you practical advice to take her away and do it with exactly how to do it <laughs> i love <Yeah>. it <laughs> i love watching people in their elements it's just amazing <laughs> <laughs> but Dr. I want to say thank you so much for being a part of this. This is this has been so insightful, honestly, and, and so much fun to to watch the passion as well as hear about it and a little bit about your journey. I'm sure it took a span of 30, 40 years and you've condensed it into these beautiful yeah. few minutes to be able to share with everyone about um how how it is to really live as a magical yeah. unicorn that you are. So that's awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, You're so welcome. Jackie's details are coming up shortly. If you want to check out her mosaic, Cyprus is really popular for mosaic and actually for having someone who's traveled and all the different aspects to it, I'm sure it's amazing. And I'm definitely going to check it out. But her details <laughs> are coming out her, her, on how to contact her on social media, online, and also the physical shop as well, if you happen to be in Cyprus. So thank you so much, Jackie, for being here. You're very welcome. Thank you. What I would like to say is don't be a unicorn in a straight jacket. Do what you want to do. Absolutely. <laughs>